Hello everyone, welcome to part mod development in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I had previously shown off the Gaganyan spacecraft, but I had not added it to the real spacecraft pack before. This is the spacecraft from India that is due to be test launched on the GSLV Mark III sometime this year. And actually, uh, one schedule said July, but that I don't think happened. Uh, so here's the GSLV Mark III. I did release it as part of the real rockets pack. And so now I'm adding the Gaganyan spacecraft to my real spacecraft pack, which will be in the video description. And this video will be testing it to make sure that it works properly, especially the heat shield. Uh, so I'll see that. And the real spacecraft pack also includes Bepi Colombo, Blue Moon, the original Blue Origin lunar lander proposal that's now obsolete, Chandrayaan 3, CST 100, Dragon 2, Mars Insight, Intelsat 1, Leesat. Lunar Gateway Modules, Marco, Osiris-Rex, Mars Perseverance, and a generic Tubsat that's sort of like one that a commsat that was launched by the shuttle and on Delta rockets, and uh, well, it's generic. So anyway, there's all that stuff, but they'll be in separate folders, so if you don't want something, you can delete those, and the Gaganyan spacecraft will be in its own folder inside the EDB Mods folder. If you're not using Realism Overhaul, normally this stuff requires realism overhaul but if you're not using it you can delete the ro config files in the ro config folder so that you don't have any problems with that just in case and it'll also uh, require textures unlimited and raider nix uh, version of bd animations might not be necessary for the gaganyan spacecraft i think i used the default module for that and uh, the only real animation here is the solar panels, which should be default. And then the little umbilical thing can go up or down. That's it. It doesn't automatically do that when you decouple. Now, to find the parts, you type in Gaganyan like that in the search field. And then you'll get all the parts. Uh, the fairing, which will attach to th uh, the upper stage of the GSLV Mark III. So it's... Um, now, there's an adapter, and it doesn't attach the adapter, it attaches to the stage, just remember that. And uh, so, the fairing, the adapter, and then there's the old air cap, and then the air cap for the new model. I'm, this is the new model. The old model was taller. Do, 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 do. Um, just by a little bit. And so, yeah, uh, that is different so anyway that is not how they do it right now the new model is this one and uh, so the air cap for the new model or if you like the old model which looks a little bit more like dragon then go for it or the old dragon uh, that the heat shield's common there's a one-piece launch escape system if you don't want to deal with the fairings separately or uh, you can have the fairings plus the this part on the top and that will go on this launch escape system the coupler which is placed on top of the spacecraft on the top node there. The other node is for a docking port. So um, yeah, whether we want a docking port or not, this time I'm not having one, so there's an awkward space there, but normally you might want one. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if they're gonna be docking to anything, but or even putting a docking port, but yeah, let's set that aside for now. That's an option for you. Uh, so launch escape system decoupler, and then the service module, that's an old service module for the old spacecraft type. And then there's the updated version, which is what we've got here. So the old one uh, looked very different. It looked like this. And also it had uh, the solar panel sort of slanted on it, sort of like that. Um, now they don't do that, so they just have it flat. So the updated version solar panels are like that. Uh, the solar panels currently don't track. Uh, I'll fix that. Uh, sometime soon hopefully and then the old spacecraft and the new model and then the, those aren't going to be part of the pack so ignore that so those are the parts and we are going to launch this uh, as far as assembly is concerned mm, I don't want to pull it all apart um, put the model first the spacecraft there and then make sure to put the parachutes on top then the aero cap then the heat shield on the bottom, then the mo service module decoupler, then the service module, um, updated version, then the solar panels, they'll have separate nodes for each of them. Put the panel side out if you want it to face like this. Remember, it doesn't track right now. And then 
after that you put the after putting the aero cap you can put the decoupler for the launch escape system uh, you can put the adapter underneath the service module and then put the fairings on the stage well you have to put the stage on and then you put this on top of on that decoupler so that's the assembly I'm sure it will be perfectly perfectly self-explanatory all right uh, now I've action grouped all the launch escape stuff on action group one and action group the solar panels on action group two. So let's try it out. This will be version 0 0.9 of the real spacecraft pack. The landscape here doesn't look great, but that's because it's actual photo scenery of the real launch site, though we have some land jutting out here because the terrain doesn't quite match. Uh, but yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. This part is not. <laughs> um, uh, the coastline isn't quite right, unfortunately. But yeah, that's why the texture is a little bit muddy here. Please forgive me. Uh, this is the best quality that I could get for now. Anyway, uh, maybe I can get better soon. We will see. So, I've got a launch script for it. GSLV Mark III. And only the booster is light initially. off we go. It's got apparently a lot of Delta V with it and I'll have to check the numbers on the GSLV Mark III because I do know that it ends up in orbit with quite a lot of Delta V too. The Guyanian spacecraft carries three and it's a good thing to have because it's very light. It's legitimately very light. It, the spacecraft itself is only about three tons so it's like 3.5 or something like that. So that's, I mean, it's cramped because it's a 3.5 meter, 3 meter diameter spacecraft. Uh, but actually, I mean, it depends on how you think about Soyuz because it has two separate modules that people can live in. But it's probably roomier than Soyuz and fairly light. So it's good for those purposes. And yeah, I thought it was nifty. Somewhat cheaty even. Probably even cheap. Alright, so here we go. The script is timed for the booster separation and the lighting of the core. The core lights first, and then the boosters separate, so we'll see that. And those are just set to certain times that I think are matching some launcher or another. So, core ignition with the Vicus engines, or whatever they call it now. They call them, the, the, the engines are called something different now probably have the name right here. Uh, HPVE-1 core engine. It holds on to the boosters a little bit while they burn out. Maybe just to get away from land or stuff. And off they go. The separatrons you'll have to add on your own. That wasn't just the... That, and I don't have separate decouplers for it on the GSLB Mark III pack. Uh, or in the real rockets pack, they're just the stock decouplers and added separatrons. I did not put separatrons on the core, that might be something you want to do. I also don't have this script uh, separating off the launch escape system, that's why I have it on action group one. And uh, the reason I don't have the script doing that is because this was supposed to be a generic GSLB Mark III script. Oh! I take it back. Actually, launch escape system went. <laughs> I did not do that. Okay, that was probably the fairing uh, time. So, all right. I didn't think it would go on the fairing time, but it did. Good thing it was staged properly. So, all is well. The color of the capsule or spacecraft might be different now. I don't know about that. Staging. Yeah, I, I don't know if they kept this color. This was the old color. They might paint it over this color or something else. I like this color though, it makes it more distinctive. As far as the interior is concerned, it's just a, a generic interior. I forget which one this is. I guess it's the Mark 1-3 pod. Probably this stage could do with staying at a higher pitch 
since the upper stage is like 8 minutes long. 9 minutes and 27 seconds. Staging. This is a hydrolock stage up here. Oh, this is the CE20 engine. It, the engine definitely has the right stats. The only question is whether I got the right dry mass for this. It also sucks up the electric charge pretty quickly. Should probably put more of that in the stage. Uh, you may, if you want to reuse uh, reignite this stage, it has two ignitions. Uh, you might want to put some RCS on there. Right now, it's just planned as a one ignition deal. Yep, here it is pitching up. It probably doesn't do, need to do it that dramatically, but don't worry, we'll get to orbit. That much I know. Okay, looks like we'll be making orbit just about over Singapore. I don't know if this is the inclination they'll be going to or anything like that. They might avoid this trajectory just so that it's not over other places. But it's not bad to conclude the orbit close to Singapore. Okay, and... Shut down, 214 by 174. And we've got 1,400 meters per second left. So, yeah, that's, that's why I need to review. But for now, what we need to test is the spacecraft. So, first, separation. And this is the service module. And let's get the solar panels out. The engines just fire straight. And then the RCS it was a unique configuration when I, I got the service module image. I don't know whether it's still like this, but anyway, the RCS was fine and should be able to turn us. The pod, of course, has its own RCS. The pod does not have descent mode. So that's another thing. Okay, yeah, the RCS has no problem moving us. Uh, let's make sure that we get sunlight. Let's see. Given that they don't track. Okay, yeah, electric charge is fine. Okay, but the main thing I was nervous about was the heat shields because they seem to have changed some stuff maybe. So I need to make sure that the heat shield works. And yeah, let's just deorbit and get to that. So let's say we want to get back to the Indian Ocean. Oh, while we're here, maybe um, after we go retrograde, I'll have one of them pop out to see whether the hatch works. Okay, EVA. Whoa. Oh, it's facing the wrong way. You should be holding it. Yeah, okay. Well, they can pop out. They're just facing the wrong way when they do. Oop, and also might have imparted some spin to the whole thing. Looked like he was a bit clipped in initially when he popped out, but that might have just been the animation. I don't know. It was sort of froze right there. Okay, ignition. This just generates four kilonewtons altogether. A fair amount of delta V though. That should do the trick. Okay, as we emerge into daylight, let me separate off the service module. And we'll activate the spacecraft's RCS as well. Off that goes. Ah, I should have done the umbilical animation. Oh well. So according to Wiki, the dry mass of the spacecraft is 3.735 tons. Right now we're 4.68. That might have been, it might be the mass of the ablator plus the supplies. We do have food, water, and oxygen uh, and some propellant and the Kerbals. I don't know if they weigh extra. Um, I always forget whether they added that eventually or not, possibly. Uh, but... At some point they were planning, I, th I think they did, but maybe, I don't know. Okay, so yeah, we've got other stuff. The launch mass is supposed to be 8.2 tons. So that's this plus whatever's in the service module. Service module doesn't really have, oh, it does, uh, three tons. So three tons plus 
Mm. Oh, and we do have the parachutes as well. But then the parachute mass should be counted as part of the dry mass, I think. Uh, 3 tons plus this is uh, 7.68 tons. And um, once you take 8.2 and minus out the propellant that we've already used, uh, probably that's about right. So, okay, well, currently over Saudi Arabia, pretty pretty uh, good bet that we're going to end up in the Indian Ocean, so. Our cap doesn't fit exactly right for some reason. Uh, the, re uh, the textures were aligned for the previous version. I think if you rotate it a little bit, it'll line up a little bit better. No, I don't know. It's just that changes were made. Looking at images, I think they paint painted white right now. Which is typically boring. <laughs> uh, okay, we're finally getting some flame effects and some ablation. Ablation seems to be a good rate for a low Earth orbit vehicle. Deceleration a little bit late. But then again, it's a fairly small diameter capsule. Again, sorry for the lack of the scent mode. I'm mainly saying sorry to the Kerbals who are going to get extra G-force here. But it is just from Leo. Okay, dying down a bit. Right. Peak was 7.7 .7 Gs. Eh, for Kerbals it's fine. Okay. Aero cap separation. Well, that's fine. Well, the parachutes are not part of the mod. The parachutes are real shoot parachutes. So everything seems to be fine. Uh, usable anyway. So I will put the link to the updated real spacecraft mod in the video description. And let's just see this thing sit down so that everybody can be assured that the Kerbals are safe. Okay, recover vessel. So I'll call that a mostly successful retest of the Gungan Yun spacecraft as part of the real spacecraft pack. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.